We're starting to see how quickly our document type tree grows once we build and extend on our website. In many cases, it will be very useful to have a way to structure this tree. It could also be very useful to have some sets of properties that you can use again and again without having to set them up every time. In this episode, we're going to see how setting up compositions gives us the opportunity to have document types inherit properties from other document types and how we can easily structure these by using folders. We're also shortly going to cover how we can reorder our groups and properties to once again improve on the experience for our content editors. Now, what's on the agenda for this video? Well, photos will be covered first, and then we'll be creating and using a composition. Finally, we'll reorganize our groups and properties by using the reorder option. Let's get started with folders. Folders exist to help us organize the back office. As the site grows, the document type folder can get rather large and it can be hard to find what you're looking for. But hey, there's a way around it. Click on the three dots next to the document type folder. We've already covered most of the options here, except the final one, folder. We're going to use that now. We'll create a new folder and call it compositions. There we go. All our document types that will be used as compositions will be stored in this location. Great. Now, what is a composition? Simply put, they are a way to relate document types to inherit properties from each other. This avoids us having to create duplicates of the same properties on multiple document types. To get a better understanding of compositions, let's jump back into the back office. We'll go ahead and create a new document type under our compositions folder. And here we'll choose document without a template because we will not need that here. We will call it SEO. We'll add a group and call that SEO as well. So we'll add a few properties. We want to use this document type to store information to improve search engine optimization on our website. So we will want to add fields like meta title, meta description, and meta keywords. Let me just fast forward this part as you're already familiar with the flow of creating properties. Great, we've now created our very first document type in our compositions folder. To get the best possible SEO on our website, we would want these properties on almost all of the pages on our website. With compositions, this is easy to accomplish. So we'll start by going back to our homepage document type up here and navigate to the compositions menu, which you can find up here to the right. The dialog here will list all document types that we can use as a composition. You may notice that some are grayed out and cannot be selected. This is because they share a property with the same alias body text. We cannot have multiple properties on the same document type with the same alias. When we move to templating and displaying our data, you will see that Umbraco will not know which field or property to use if two share the same alias. Luckily, the back office helps us out and will simply not allow that mistake to occur. Now let's choose our new SEO document type as a composition here and hit submit. We can now see that the SEO group and properties from the SEO document type has been added to our homepage. As you might notice, we cannot change the group name or update the properties. If you want to update these, we need to go back to the SEO document type. The same applies to reordering groups and tabs. Let's start from the menu up here. This feature here will allow you to order groups and properties just like you want it. However, having this composition added in our homepage document type here, we cannot reorder groups and properties coming from the composition. But we can update this in our SEO document type. For instance, if we wanted to display the SEO group under the content group, we'd need to head back to the SEO document type. So if we go into reordering here, we can increase the numeric value up here to one and hit save. Now back on the homepage document type, we will see that the SEO groups and properties is now listed under the content group. Finally, if we move to the content section and select our front page, we can see that the SEO group exists with all the metadata properties. We can now follow the same process on other document types to have the SEO properties added to all the content. 
that was it for this video. Let's do a quick review. So you can use folders to organize the back office. It's possible to inherit properties between document types by using compositions. You can easily reorder groups and properties on your document types, even when you're working with compositions. And there we have it. That was not only it for this video, but for the entire chapter. If you watched all the videos in this chapter, you now have all you need to know about document types, or as we call them in the first video, the pillars of your Umbraco website. In the next chapter, we'll be covering templates and how to start building the front end of your website based on these document types. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.